I was first aware of um, problems with swallowing when I was a, a small child. I can remember not being able to swallow foods like meat and bread um, and eggs making me sick, literally vomiting with, after eating eggs. Yeah, it took a long time to get diagnosed. As time went on, um, as I got older, I, I started refusing foods. I learned coping mechanisms because um, my mother was told I was just being a naughty, fussy child. There was nothing wrong with me. Um, and I just needed discipline. We went through you know, lots of years of me being punished for not eating. And then I decided to um, take control by training as a chef. So I could, I could avoid eating by being at work during mealtimes and you know, those sorts of things. So I could go home and say, oh, I don't need any food I've eaten at work when really I hadn't, but I was believed. Yeah, I got diagnosed in 2016. Uh, I was 50 years old and it took moving across the country, seeing a different doctor before I was actually listened to. Before I moved, I'd been referred by my old GP to mental health because they couldn't find anything wrong, but they weren't looking for the right thing. But yeah, I got diagnosed in 2016 and I'm now seeing a consultant. I um, have to travel two and a half hours to see that consultant, but at least I'm seeing somebody who's in the know. I'd met Amanda from EOS Network, um, before it was EOS Network, but I met her in London at Allergy and Free From show and we got talking and she suggested that from what I was experiencing, it could be eosinophilic esophagitis. She has such a passion and, you know, I know it all comes out from her being in difficult situations with her children. Um, but she has such a passion to help everybody else, you know, and I, I just want to thank her so much every time, every day I could, could give her a hug and say thank you because quite honestly, I don't think I would even be here without her. So I had that information to take to the doctor. She said, well, I, I don't know that it is that, but can we try something else first? I've tried everything that I know of, so go ahead, let's let's try. And that didn't work either. It was a, a muscle relaxant. She thought I was I had just tension in the muscles in, in the esophagus and it didn't work. So she then referred me for endoscopy and they took biopsies and there was the confirmation of EOE. That was the first time I'd had biopsies taken at an endoscopy before that I only had one endoscopy prior to that and they didn't take biopsies initially I thought oh good I've got an answer now we'll get somewhere I'll get treatment they'll know what to do I'll get the help no I ended up with a dietitian who gave me a long document from a um, hospital in London with all the protocols and what should happen about um, eliminating foods and then reintroducing. Um, I was seeing her every month or so to start with and she put me on the six food elimination diet and then she wanted me to start reintroducing foods every other day which went against the protocol. And when I questioned it, she said I was non-compliant and I, I was just not listening. I didn't want to do what she said. And I actually came back to her and said, I don't believe you know what you're dealing with. Uh, can you find me a dietitian that does know? I had to contact EOS Network to try and find somewhere, a hospital that would know how to deal with it for some options. I ended up um, going to Southampton and I live in the Forest of Dean and the far side of Gloucestershire but yeah they they took me on and I go down on occasion now I do mostly phone appointments
They have helped, but we're now at stalemate again because the elimination diet hasn't worked. The Jovesa, the licensed drug, hasn't worked. I'm now hoping to take part in a, a clinical trial or a new drug. That's on hold at the moment because I need general anaesthetic for the endoscopy to take the biopsies and they're waiting for a space on the list to do that. I'm taking um, Rebeprazole, which is a proton pump inhibitor, so that stops my stomach producing acid, which has helped quite a lot, but not enough. I don't take anything else. I'm still on the six food elimination diet, plus a few other foods that aren't included in that list because I know I react to them anyway. So I do have to use nutritional drinks on prescription and when I'm away from home that's what I rely on totally. I, I would have liked to have somebody who knew what they were doing initially that they knew what they were looking for but when you think about EOE's only been recognised for what, coming up 30 years now and I'm 56 it's you know they didn't know about it so I can't can't knock them for that they're trying now yeah people who know what they're doing what they're talking about and actually follow the protocol With, without eos network i wouldn't have even known as an organization you're amazing your founder is amazing i just want to help in any way that i can as well there are new uploads on the website there's all sorts of information on there we've had the community zoom webinars, meetings. We've got the Facebook group. We had COVID in the middle and because people are so spread out across the country as well, it would be difficult to do an in-person event because of the traveling, but it would be great if we could. My husband was, was pleased to finally get an answer because he found it quite distressing to, if we were out for a meal, and I would start to have trouble swallowing, he, he would worry. He still does. He's got very, very good at reading labels and coming up with ideas to make meals in a different way. Some of my family are, oh, okay. Others are, oh, I think I might have that too. My eldest sister is actually gonna get tested for it because she thinks she's got it. Some of my friends are really good. You know, they'll, they'll read labels and they'll make sure that if we go around to visit, they've got something that I can have. Work has been difficult. I actually had to leave my job because of it, which is why I started my own business. And that's focused around food allergies. A step into the unknown, really. <laughs> People, when you're out as well, they look at you like you're mad when you say, well, I can't have this and I can't have that. And you send a long list of foods that you have to avoid and then you get an email back saying, sorry, we can't cater for you. So as much as I appreciate that honesty, it's not being very inclusive and that hurts. I was actually not invited to my own mother's 90th birthday party because I was too difficult to feed. It's too complicated. So that hurts. Because I was a chef for 40 years and, well, in hospitality for 40 years, I've got quite extensive knowledge of how hospitality industry works. And when I had to get out of it, I thought, well, let's use this experience and my knowledge and deliver training. So I went on and did the courses so that I could be a trainer. And I now deliver food safety courses um, accredited and food allergen awareness, food allergen management courses for hospitality. I also do consulting. If there's a, say there's a restaurant out there that doesn't know what to do, I can go and help them. I can help them produce their documentation. My business is food allergy for Friends Limited. For me, it gives me something positive to focus on. Whereas if I were thinking all the time about the negative side of it and how, how ill I feel sometimes and how difficult it is for me to have a social life or to go out, then it's, it's easy to get into a downward spiral and get depressed. And that's not me. 
I don't want to be depressed. You've got a choice. You can either walk away and give up or you can try and fight. And I chose to fight. I would say get all the information you can. There's a lot of information now on the EOS Network website. Take that with you to your doctor. I would also recommend keep a food diary for a few weeks and not just food, your symptoms as well. It gives you evidence. Most of the time, when you phone for an appointment, you've been feeling bad, but it can be weeks before you actually see the doctor. By the time you see them, you're feeling better. Get as much evidence as you can and be persistent. It will be hard and don't be scared to show your emotions. There's the support group there on Facebook. You know, we're all in this together. We've been there and we're coming through, you know, we're keeping going, we're not giving up.